<laughs> All right, we're back here on Playbook Experts YouTube channel. And as you can see already, Mark Lawrence is not here. I'm hosting, filling in for Mark. Uh, Jim had the bye week. In, uh, we have a preseason <laughs> bye. Jim had it already last week. Mark's got the preseason <laughs> bye this week. Uh, actually, Mark's a little bit under the weather, but he'll be back hopefully next week. Should be fine. Um, but, yes, I'm filling in, and we're going to talk some NFL on the show today. Last week we talked college football. Uh, and, and don't hold us to these predictions in July. This is just an opportunity for us to kind of, you know, stir the pot, give our initial thoughts and what we're thinking about. Matter of fact, I think we, we really only had our one rock, uh, rock uh, um, solid uh, future from last week, a uh, prediction that actually one of us spent money on, and that was Andy putting some money on Alabama. At, what was it, 14 to 1 to win the uh, championship? And either 12, 12 or fourteen to one in the future book. Uh, I think it was. I think it was fourteen to one, but it might have been twelve to one. It's it's been two weeks. I can't remember that far back. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll have many more of these futures uh, as we get closer to the start of the season. I've we'll got I've got two for today actually. Oh. That I've made. You've already made it. Okay. Yep. NFL or college? Really? N NFL. Okay, so wow. you can throw them in there as we go along here. And uh, obviously, I'm sure we'll be talking about, well, maybe we will be talking about one of those teams. Uh, so as soon as we do, you can let everybody know who that is. Uh, on the show today, what we're going to do is, is do what we did last week. And if you did not get an opportunity to check us out last week, that is, of course, available on demand here on the channel uh, where we just took a look at college football in a few segments. We basically uh, went over how each of us prepared as handicappers for the upcoming season. We're also going to talk about uh, giving, again, an early prediction on which we believe are the surprise teams or going to be the surprise teams in the NFL, uh, either pro or con, uh, and, uh, and also a couple of interesting questions, and that is, uh, what we believe will end up being the biggest concern of the 24 season and the best moment of the 24 season. So that's all coming up here on our show. Uh, I want to remind everybody that this uh, show this week and every week is brought to you by the 2024 Playbook Football Preview Magazine. And it's now in stock at playbooksports.com and the Gambler's Bookstore in Vegas. It's also on sale at newsstands in most Barnes & Nobles and Books A Million. Matter of fact, Andy... You're proof that they're available in Barnes and Nobles. Is that correct? <laughs> At least in Henderson, Nevada, they are, and I'm sure there's nothing special about the Henderson, Nevada, Barnes and Nobles. So I assume they're nationwide. Of course, in Vegas, we do have the uh, uh, Gamblers Book Club, and I think they've been in there for about a week or so. And uh, all I know about Books a Million is I believe that they are a chain, mostly in the southeastern part of the country, from what I'm familiar uh, about them. All right. Well, uh, hopefully I'll have mine uh, coming in the mail here shortly, uh, and I can uh, gloat just like Andy. Uh, so I'll let you know uh, when I get it, uh, because it's definitely a part of the research I'm sure all of us use to prepare for the NFL season. So let's get right to it. Uh, and uh, I'm going to also let you know what Mark's answers were going to be if he was going to have the opportunity to join us. So in this particular segment, uh, Mark wanted to let everybody know uh, that how he prepares for each NFL season is through projected season win totals. So, for instance, uh, he spoke about Atlanta facing the softest schedule, followed by the Jets and the Commanders. And on the flip side, you got the Patriots with the toughest schedule, followed by Pittsburgh and Minnesota. Uh, how many of how many do you guys, Tony? I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, do you put uh, how much emphasis do you put into the NFL schedule each season when you're doing your research? Oh, starting off, none. I mean, look, I, I have a very specific, loose way of doing M NFL. I look at the training camp schedule and say, all right, I, I, I'm going to try to watch as many of these games as possible. And thankfully, either their streaming service is garbage in-game uh, when you're trying to watch live bets. Uh, the the preseason package is actually pretty good because you can go back and watch the games. And obviously with NFL Network too, they show every single uh, preseason game. So I like to be surprised by preseason depth charts and stuff, but I don't at all. Uh, I go week to week on the NFL. And then I use my prep as what's actually happening from day to day in the preseason, who's winning camp battles, 
you know, uh, it, it's a completely different animal than how I attack college football. All right. So out of preseason games, because some people believe preseason games mean nothing. How – give me a percentage of how much of the preseason content that you believe actually matters. Oh, I'm, I'm 1 million percent on board. Preseason games actually mean nothing. But so, the, the, okay. the, actual pre, the actual preseason does. You know what's going. I mean, of course. Nowadays, yes. over 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 the last five five uh, to ten years, it's basically these uh, these teams getting together to play a full week, and then you reading about how the ones do against the ones when they when you know when the the big day for that is, and then the, the preseason games are actually just you know roster hopefuls. So you know I'm under no illusion that the actual. Wow, the Steelers look great in the third quarter of this game. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about that I use the preseason uh, m- way more so as as far as um, just reading about what these teams are, are trying to accomplish. Um, you know who who the who looks good in in actual training camp, as opposed to um, you know because because the the information is so more readily available than any other sport, including college football. Yeah. I mean, in college football, we try to be ambitious with everybody to see, all right, well, let, let's let's keep as abreast as, as possible on what's going on in, in on the, with these teams. In the NFL, everybody's got dedicated beat writers, and there are about three or four of them whose entire job it is to, to detail this, and they do a really good job of it. So that, that's, that's kind of what I go into. I don't really go into projected win totals. I, don't go, I, I just like to go to the week, week to week. Uh, how are these teams actually looking heading into week one? Yeah, uh, it was a few years ago. I remember watching this. Is, I think this might have been the year after the Raiders were in the Super Bowl. And, I, uh, and, and, they, and again, I think this was because Callahan was there. And I remember watching him play in the preseason and then just getting and then even hearing the announcers talk and then just get because they had talked about what was going on during the week and practice and stuff and just go, getting this bad vibe about the team. And and, and, and and ever since then, I've realized that even though we know the, the total of the games mean nothing, that you I at least I do. I can pick up uh, Jim uh, and I know you've been doing this longer than all of us. I, I, I can pick up <laughs> about uh, maybe. <laughs> 10, 10 to 20 percent of what I see in preseason games that actually kind of do matter like hey you know what like like that Raider uh, team I don't think this is gonna be a good season I don't like what I see there's something just off about the team and I think you could even see it in training camp in the preseason and so yeah I think there are times again only 10 to 20 percent but there are times that you could pick up things in the preseason that might impact the team in the regular season that was even more that was more more true years ago when they played a lot of preseason games and they cared and they mattered to those coaches nowadays some coaches don't even play their starters at all yeah. but you do like tony was talking about it's not necessarily the games but it's how they're prepping during the week it's what the beat writers are seeing in practice that's where he, he's 100 percent right that way you can pick up some the problem is until they start playing meaningful games that matter and they want to win, you're not going to see what they're capable of because the mechanics, we all know these guys are super athletic. We, and we know once they stop dropping weight and picking, you know, running, running routes and running practices and get, start getting into physical shape, they're going to be more prepared to play football. But like Belichick, used to say he's not around anymore as a head coach or even in football at the moment but a lot of these teams are not ready to play week one week two week three week four because they really haven't done enough as a unit or in unit form to really produce so i don't expect that much uh, consistency from these teams the first two three four weeks uh, until they really start to round into shape and get some cohesiveness. Yeah, speaking of Belichick, I remember everybody remembers the year they won the Super Bowl that they started the season. They got annihilated by Buffalo in week one at Buffalo. I think that was like 45 nothing, And that was week one. And they went on to win the Super Bowl. So it, it just shows you that, especially nowadays with the extra game, uh, Andy, that it's becoming more and more where 
you're watching these preseason games, as Jim mentioned, and they're just not even playing the starters. And even when they play the starters in the last preseason game, you used to get like a whole half, and sometimes they want to prepare for them to come out in the second half, just like they would simulate a regular season second half, and let's go out and play maybe a quarter, maybe a few uh, uh, um, possessions. Now you're lucky if you get any of these really superstar players to play at all. Yeah, actually, uh, these days, the uh, preseason, the people who watch the preseason closest, I think, are those who participate in fantasy football to find out guys who might be uh, surprise players that hadn't been written up about in the preseason magazines or talked about. Um, in, in fact, um, my approach to preseason, I know there are people who do extremely well in preseason as far as betting preseason and winning. I don't from a very I, I don't participate from a very philosophical standpoint and that is the goal of preseason is not to win games it's to make sure you decide on your best 53 man roster with which to enter the season so you're making a lot of decisions now as far as the values that I get out of preseason is for the most part pay attention clearly to key injuries that might sideline players uh, significant players, key players for weeks, if not the season, but certainly extended periods of time. And also if there are position battles that are being decided upon and being won by certain players perhaps that might have been given a 50-50 or less chance of making it and what that does to the overall dynamic of that team. As far as the preparation work that I do, well, clearly I update all the uh, uh, the software programs that I write as far as being using during the season to do my analysis which cuts down a lot of time than having to work on those as the weeks are unfolding i get all that out of the way and also taking a look and, and you know I, I wish mark were here when you talked about his strength of schedule i think i know the answer you sort of alluded to it and that is looking at the strength of schedule but not by looking at it at what the records were last year for the teams that the uh, each team is playing this year but rather and i think this is what what mark does because you sort of alluded to it using this year's season win totals and saying okay what what was the, not what was atlanta's record last year if you're evaluating let's see new orleans uh, strength of schedule but what is atlanta's expected win total this year because there are significant differences in a number of teams and i want to base the strength of schedule not on what the teams were from last year but what they are expected to do this year so I'll evaluate the teams from that perspective also I spend some time and I get the chance to do a lot of it during this four-day uh, baseball all-star break is look at special situations or significant situations that come up during the year now I get a little bit of a start when the schedule comes out in May uh, so we've had about two months of knowing what the schedule was as far as the sequencing goes but now I'm really studying knowing what we know more about we've seen the season win totals for example uh, flatten out a little bit most of the movement barring any upcoming key injuries most of the movement has always taken has already taken place where teams may have opened eight and a half and they're up to nine or nine and a half with vigs adjusted so uh, when I prepare for the season I do take a look at schedule strength from the perspective of this season's expected win-loss records, but also the situations, you know, travel, three straight division games, two straight division road games, things like that, sandwich games, uh, playing, uh, and we've seen this for some strange reason in recent years, a team will play four consecutive games against the division in the opposite conference. So, for example, and I don't, I'm just going to use this as an example, let's say the Giants, let's say they're playing the AFC East uh, in a given year. For some reason, the schedule maker may have the Giants play all four of those AFC East teams at once, as opposed to spreading it out throughout the season. So the ability now to take a look and be prepared, and again, a lot of it has to do with some of the contests that I'm in, especially, for example, Circus Survivor, where the uh, the um, outline lane of the, uh, the, the unfolding of the season is critically important to find out teams favorable and unfavorable spots. The other thing I do, and part of it also is look in line with looking at strength of schedule, uh, a number of places. I know, for example, I was just over at the Westgate the other day. They have lines out, and I know a number of online books uh, also and other, other properties, lines out for all 18 weeks of this season's schedule. So you can see what are expected to be spots where this team's going to be an underdog, a, a playoff caliber team is projected to be an underdog, let's say, three straight weeks. You may want to keep an eye on that situation, knowing that maybe those will be favorable times if the teams uh, develop as we expect, not necessarily how the lines maker expect that you may get some nice early season values with some teams by looking three, four weeks ahead. Uh, raise hands of any of you that A, 
Do you, do any of you guys wager on futures for win totals for the season? That's a that's a zero. Nobody Very wagers early. on win totals. Well, no, I, 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 I have Andy, my hand. Up. Oh, I didn't I see it. Okay, I thought that was your head, Andy. All right, uh, preseason that's games. My head. Absolutely. Jim. No. Andy. No. Okay. So Tony, you're the only one that uh, wagers on preseason games, and Andy is the only one that does win totals. So, Tony, get into the preseason games. Why do you do it, and uh, what's your formula? There are definitely discrepancies between coaches that don't give a rat's ass about what the result is and coaches who and, are And then there's John over. Harbaugh. And then there's <laughs> yeah. John Harbaugh. Right. John Harbaugh, <laughs> chief among them, you know, yeah. his winning percentage speaks for himself. You know, his winning streak spoke for itself and finally got snapped. I mean, it's just a matter of building a culture. You see it in summer league right now. The Charlotte Hornets undefeated in, in summer action, which is funny. But I mean, they've got a new head coach, a whole new system. Uh, so you, they're they're really speaking to people that are listening and saying, "Hey, let's let's try to build a winning culture." So I mean, those situations arise. You've got situations where you know you're going to have. I think it's deeper into the preseason on this, but you know you're going to have um, a starting quarterback in for a full quarter whereas one won't play that type of thing and you can bet halves in the in the in the preseason uh so yeah just things that are, arise um and there's usually one per night at least and the way they they uh you know bracket out the uh the schedule with a couple of games on a thursday night and a couple of a full slate on a friday and then a couple of games on a saturday and then you're one off on a sunday so yeah there's always that's the good thing about the preseason is if you want to see camp battles like for instance i want to see how this new look uh carolina panthers offensive line looks i want to see what the the los angeles chargers wide receiving core is going to look like with you know a few big names in in, in in play so all those things i think stand out and then while you're doing your research on that, you might see something that you eh, want to capitalize on that, see if I'm right. One okay. thing I'll be looking at this year in preseason, even though I don't bet it, I want to see the quarterback battle in Pittsburgh with uh, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. And it's, I, yeah. I, I don't think that's going to be Tomlin does personally. too. personally. <laughs> Well, we'll find out a lot more. That's the other thing is we always find out, and, and it's unfortunate, but we do find out more about what does go on in, in practice and training camp than you do in these preseason games. Uh, that's why it's interesting because we always watch these preseason games, especially it's funny. There's always going to be these like star preseason players and they have these great preseasons. And we're like, well, that kid's got to make the team. I mean, look how awesome he's been. and He's leading the preseason in touchdowns and yards and he gets cut. It's like so it just shows you. It just doesn't mean anything compared to. But he can, make, he can make you some money while he's shining. That's for sure. That's what he can do. Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Another issue I have with preseason, because so many of these games are decided point spread wise in the fourth. But I think Tony was onto something with the first half bets in preseason, because the games are often decided point spread wise in the fourth quarter with players in many instances are not even going to be on the roster once the regular season goes. The coaches are making decisions on the back end of the roster based upon the playing time that uh, uh, that these guys have. And so, you know, it'd be a lot different if coaches said, you know, yeah, we want to win games, so we're going to have our starters play in the fourth quarter instead of the first quarter when the game is on the line. That's the other issue I have, that you're, the games often are being decided by players who won't be making the team. All right, Andy. No, and, and there's in-game betting, too, and bottom line, if you're in – inclined to bet on the preseason the team that's down in the fourth quarter is always throwing and the team that's yep. up is, is always running so i mean now, it, let me let me explain right why i don't why i don't get involved first of all for a lot for a lot of people that people don't want to tie up their money on on future bets for a long period of time not everybody has they can bet on credit or have the bankroll to sit for six months with their money. So I don't mm -hmm. tell people to do that. I could do it, but I don't get too involved because in, once the uh, All-Star game is over and the, now the WNBA is pretty serious, there's a lot of money I feel to be made in baseball and in the WNBA between now and the start of, the, of, of regular football, college and pro. So I don't get too involved. It's not because I don't see there's ways to make money, but 
you can only spread yourself so thin mentally and energy wise. And over the years, I've cut down on some of that. Um, so I can, and there wasn't any WNBA that I would ever focus on. Now this year I am uh, quite a bit. So those two sports occupy a lot of my time from a betting standpoint. From a research standpoint, I look, I, I go back to the formula that I used a hundred years ago. Oh, okay, I'm not that old, but close. Head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, quarterback, offensive line combined. Uh, what what has changed from last year to this year? Who does? Who who can I depend on in those positions um, going forward? Now this goes along with your strength of schedule and. There's a lot of ways to measure strength of schedule. Like Andy said, one thing, or somebody said one thing about the the, the number the number on what's their win win total for the year by the books. They've done their research. They put up a number, as opposed to going back to what their record was a year ago, which might not mean much if they've changed a lot. Like you know, you, you lose your offensive coordinator in Tampa, and now he's an often he's a head coach somewhere else what you know what is the give and take there do we know how baker mayfield's going to handle the change and other quarterbacks that, that or other teams that that have those changes i don't know those answers and i don't want to put serious money on that until i do know at least reasonably know what those answers are so i look back at what i've always looked at I need a good offensive coordinator, and I need a good offensive line to make a quarterback look good. And you can give me the best quarterback in the world, and don't give him a good offensive coordinator and an offensive line, and he's going to look like shit. Best example, so, Steve Young in Tampa Bay, then Steve Young in San Francisco. <laughs> Ages ago. That. Amen to that. Take the Super Bowl a couple of years ago where Tampa played Kansas City. And Kansas City looked like dog shit because they had a couple offensive linemen out. And, of course, Andy Reid had the problem with his son at that time, and he was a little distracted. Tampa Bay blew them out. It was not even close. There was no question who was going to win the game from the get-go. Um, you know, you really have to focus on this kind of stuff. And that's what I, I like to dig deep into that. And I have a lot of faith in these people that have done a really good job. When we analyzed the Super Bowl last year, we looked at those two teams and said, okay, we know Mahomes is the superior quarterback to everybody, and now you have Purdy in there, who's a young kid that has done well, but a lot of people don't give, want to give him the credit for being, but he's not, he's not Mahomes. And so it came down, a lot of us analyzed the game very well and then we focused on the defensive coordinators and that's where it came down to a lot of people going with kansas city because we felt the defensive coordinator for kansas city was superior to what san francisco had and would develop better throughout the game and that's what happened now it could have came down to one play going the other way or you know could have had a different outcome but those kind of things i look at as opposed to what's really going on in the camp because I don't always trust what I see in these camps. Some things I do, but not not everything. Andy, you mentioned uh, you're the only one who plays win totals. So uh, besides, I guess the obvious being what their schedule is like, uh, how do you attack win total wagering? That's a, a point that we could spend an entire show on because it's important the way you approach things. Um, I'm going to give a couple of examples. The Westgate has been put out win totals for many, many years, and they'll have teams uh, seven, eight and a half. Circa, you know, they came on board with the 2019 season, and they've done something. I think they started maybe the first year or the second year. They give you three separate numbers for each team, and they're all half half wins seven and a half eight and a half nine and a half so you can't push okay the big is what different so let's say a team's win total is seven and a half and let's say it's minus 110 each way for seven and a half on that team you can play over six and a half 
and maybe you've got to lay minus 185 because you're going over one number that's less than seven and a half. You only have to get the seven wins instead of eight. If you want to go over eight and a half, you might get you know, plus 165 instead of laying the 110 because now you've got to have one more win. And they've done that for all 32 teams, so there are a lot of opportunities there. Now, I tend to be, and, and Jim brought up a good point, you know, you're tying up your money for, uh, you know, four, five, six months, whatever it might be. And of course, a lot is going to change. We know that there are going to be some teams that have very, that for which there are very low expectations this year that are going to exceed them. And there are going to be some teams that are expected to be playoff contenders that will end up winning maybe between five and seven games. We just don't know, know yet how they are. So while you can be somewhat confident, you always have to keep in mind that this is the NFL and a lot of things can happen from year to year. What is it? I think is it the NFC East I think they've gone since 2004 with no repeat division winners. So we're talking 20 years. That's how much things change. And I think we had something uh, similar with that in the NFC South for a number of years. So I tend to be more conservative. So, for example, I made two plays. And right, I, I tend to look unders, but there are certain situations that call for overplays, and both of these are. The Los Angeles Chargers, okay? I don't have the numbers in front of me for the Circa, but the w number at the Westgate is nine, and it's over even money, okay? So I have the ability, if I don't win, I can still push. I am more willing to take a push and have no action than to say play over nine and a half, uh, or, or I'm sorry, play over a number where there's a heavy juice attack attached to the uh, uh, to the over. I'm willing to settle for a push, especially at even money or better. Now, the reason I like the Chargers, number one, they played a lot of close games last year, kind of like Minnesota did the year before, but not with the same dramatic results. They won some of those close games, and I think they lost a few more than they won. But the important thing is the coaching change. Uh, you went from perhaps one of the weakest coaches in the last quarter something uh, century in, Bra in Brandon's Brandon Staley to one of the more accomplished coaches who took over a San Francisco team that was in decline, took him uh, to the Super Bowl within a couple of years in, in Jim Harbaugh and had great success. So that's a significant difference because normally you go from maybe an average to below average coach to either a known quantity who's had some success or an unknown quantity getting an op opportunity. Here you're going from, I would have to argue, at least a below average coach, and that might be being kind, but to a coach who has a proven track record. So I think the Chargers have an opportunity. Don't know that they can catch Kansas City, although Kansas City, with all the postseason experience that they've had over the last five or six years, they've played the equivalent of an extra full season of games just based upon the number that they played in the playoffs. They may be dropping back a little bit uh, as far as what we've seen. So the gap may close, and I think that the Chargers, certainly with the talent, even though they do have some questions at wide receiver, Boy, would I love to see now that I've made that overplay. Brandon Ayuk, who's requested a trade from the 49ers to end up with the Chargers. That would that would really be a nice weapon for Herbert. But uh, that's one play that I made. The other play is a play on uh, the Green Bay Packers. And similar to the Chargers, they are priced at over. Their number is 10, even money. When I look at the NFC North, now keep in mind, I'm only looking at a sample of six games out of the 17 that they're going to play. So there are other games that have to be considered. But you have to believe Minnesota is going to be somewhat of a declining team this year uh, from last year. Of course, they did miss most of last year with uh, Kirk Cousins out uh, uh, with the season-ending injury, but uh, they, uh, they figured a decline. I personally, and I've talked about it many times throughout the course of the offseason when we did some shows, I didn't like what the Bears did. Yeah, they got some talent, but they're basically resetting everything back to stage one with Caleb Williams after Justin Fields had shown, especially with his running ability, that he had still more of an upside than the Bears looked at. I thought to, I, I personally would have, would have liked to see the Bears, and I'm not a Bears fan, but as far as looking at it from a fan's perspective, I would have liked them to stick with, Will, with the Fields and end up getting Marvin Harrison Jr. as uh, their top draft pick. I thought that would have made a huge difference for a team that had already shown some offensive strides. But as far as the Packers go... You've got Jordan Love sat behind Aaron Rodgers looking to now take over a franchise where he's going to be replacing two Hall of Famers for Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, guys who played close to 30 years between them with the uh, Packers. I like the way they played over the second half of the season. I like the way that they played within their uh, w within their playoff games and uh, the way they, they played and, and almost uh, made it. Uh, well, they had their chances late in the, in the year, I don't, in, in the playoffs rather. Um, I like the fact that uh, they've got a solid running game. Uh, I like the fact that, again, this is a team that still has to improve. 
They're still picked second to finish behind Detroit, although I do have some places who have the division odds relatively close between the two. But I think the Packers are a team that has an opportunity. It probably goes into a little bit later. I don't know if you would call them a dark horse to uh, you know, maybe be a Super Bowl winner this year, but I could certainly see them continuing the improvement that they had uh, with uh, LaFleur, the coach who had success uh, before uh, uh, Rodgers retired as well when he was running the team. So you have the Chargers. That's one of your futures, the Chargers at the over total? Chargers over nine, even money. Packers over ten, even money. Ten, you know, they have I, they have to go nine and eight for me to lose that play. I could push. Uh, I'm sorry. The, uh, yeah, the Packers have to go nine and eight for me to lose. I think they're a playoff team, which generally means at least ten, yep. and probably 11 or 12 wins. All right, well. Remember, keep in mind, it's only been a few years. We, we, we're so accustomed to basing things on a 16-game schedule. Yep. Okay, so, yeah. There's a big difference between having to go 11 and five and 11 and six to cash an over 10. By the way, Jim, you'll remember talked about all the preseason games they used to play. NFL went to a 16-game schedule in 1978. Pre- prior to that, they had played 14 regular season games and six exhibition or preseason games. Right. That's right. Half, basically half a season. And uh, this uh, unsolicited. Well, yeah, I could pretty much say that for now but yeah maybe not uh this nfc north preview segment is brought to you from andy isco brought to you by <laughs> the playbook preview guide magazine so again don't forget you can order the uh preview guide magazine available at barnes and nobles and also books a million but you can do it online at playbooksports.com by the way, Greg, let me mention one thing because you sort of brought it up before. The one thing that Mark does, which is tremendous, because our memories, as much as we like to think they're great, and it doesn't matter whether you're young and old, sometimes you forget things, you don't put them in the proper order. He's got the statistics for each team, college oh, yeah. and pro, going back the last four years. So you can see if teams are improving, say, in their rushing game, in their passing game, offense, defense, whereas you might remember one year in the last four that they did well, how have they done, as opposed to having to go back and taking a look at four different uh, sources to find the data for each year. He puts it there for you. And remember, four years now, you're looking at an NFL sample of uh, – you know, 64, 64 to 68 games when you go back. That's a pretty good sample size. And unlike colleges, there's not nearly, and Jim touched upon this as well, there's not nearly as much turnover in the NFL season to season as there is in college football. All right, don't forget to like, share, uh, comment on the videos. If you have any questions for any of our handicappers uh, or, or anything, just comment. Uh, just uh, uh, go ahead and uh, put it there in the comment section, and we will definitely... Uh, get back to you if it is an intriguing question of course uh, we can respond both in the comment section and also on the air on the next week's show so uh, we like the interaction with our viewers and the more interaction the better here so questions comments the more the better all right now segment number two let's talk about best moment of the 2024 season all right we're going to start with tony uh what do you think oh we'll start with mark so Mark's predicted best moment of the 2024 NFL season is finding his hometown Cleveland Browns playing in this year's Super Bowl. So, uh, yes, it, I, I can't imagine any other. I, I mean, check. I, I must say, Mark, and he's not here, but I'm sure he's listening. Mark, you just had the Florida Panthers win the, win the Stanley Cup. One professional championship a year is, is enough. All right. Don't, don't get greedy. Uh, you got your win uh, in hockey, so maybe maybe the Browns. Well, then again, uh, he did say playing in the Super Bowl, so not necessarily winning it. All right, uh, Tony, uh, give us uh, what you think, or what you're hoping, I guess either way, what you think the best moment of the 2024 NFL season will be. Well, I don't have an NFL team, so I can't go homer like I did with college with UCF. I want to, and I'm not going to move past, I'm going to stick to my guns and say I don't look that far forward. So I'll stick to something in week one. It's not the best moment, so I'm, I'm also not playing the game, but it is what I'm looking forward to a lot. And this is the Cleveland Browns hosting the Dallas Cowboys in the man are our fans hopeful mode bowl, uh, because it is a game where somebody's going to get their bubble burst and immediately hang their heads. You got the Browns uh, on paper, very talented. You got the Cowboys, hate their offseason. 
you know, what what did they do? Nothing. Uh, can they can they still <laughs> pick up the pieces from last season and be better? We'll see, and we'll find out immediately, right? And then you've got a uh, you've got great defensive players on both sides, arguably the best in the AFC against the best in the NFC. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, looking looking forward to that matchup in particular. <laughs> Week one, Browns Cowboys. Tony can't wait. That's uh, that's at least his uh, best moment in the NFL for that's week a, that's one. That's as far far forward as I'm willing to look. Yeah, for week one. Uh, all right, uh, best moment, Jim Feist. Best moment for okay. This is looking forward. I'm there's a lot of hype right now on the Jets. Uh, they, they rebuilt the offensive line. They got Aaron Rodgers coming back. He's a 40 year old quarterback that really hasn't played super well in years. Even his last year at Green Bay wasn't all that outstanding. Last year he had no chance to play because he got hurt in the first two minutes. Um, I don't believe that he's going to have that great a year. Um, it's just I think it's hard for somebody as you age um, so is that a moment comfortable in life and and I don't I don't think he's going to have that big of a year I think the Jets are going to be a disaster this isn't the best moment it's the best moment for me because I'll probably be fading him a lot so that will be a best moment okay the ball are you still a big Jets guy what's that are you still a big Jets guy me yeah. Yeah. Yes. I. 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 I wasn't gonna say anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking I'm sorry. Through. I, didn't I know already. Knives I, at you. Yeah. I, I, we. We can have this discussion when we have our NFL preseason preview show, and we go over all of our predictions. That's when we can have it out and debate, and it'll be really fun. Uh, what, but what, yeah. What, hey, Iron Rodgers has to right be now, healthy. You know. So. What's hilarious right now is that I that Netflix that. doc. I don't know. I don't know who's seen it. The, the receiver doc which is just like QB, the one with Mahomes, but this was highlighted the receivers and Devontae Adams was one of the stars in it. And in it, he has like a, a, a maybe a four, six hour dinner with Aaron Rodgers oh, yeah. and everybody speculates that uh, that's where they decided to join forces. And I mean, Devontae Adams basically says, Aaron, you know, wow, I really needed that. I miss you, man. It was a, a bro moment. So you can you can jump to conclusions on that, and a lot of people are doing it. Well, look, Jim just said it though. Uh, he didn't say anything about injury. He said it. He didn't think he's going to have a good year. So it's not about injury for me. It is. It's about injury. But Jim believes uh, it does not matter if Aaron Rodgers <laughs> plays in twenty twenty four. He believes the Jets are not going to have a successful season. Uh, all right. So big moment, Andy. What's your big moment of twenty twenty four? Well, I will say that I am intrigued to see how the Jets will perform, and if indeed Jim is correct and the Jets struggle out of Wait the down. gate or Aaron Rodgers Wait. gets injured, we might see a re, uh, reuniting. Uh, we may, or if the Jets, I'm sorry, if the Jets end up doing better than expected, we may see Devonte Adams uh, reunited with Aaron Rodgers, especially if the Raiders struggle early. But uh, I'm intrigued by that entire situation. I'll be interested to see how Aaron Rodgers plays, especially because he hasn't played in two seasons except for those four snaps last year. So, you know, what will that do versus the aging process versus the being somewhat fresher? Now, the best moment for me would be if Kansas City completes a three-peat because within minutes of winning Super the last Super Bowl, I made a futures bet on Kansas City at 9-1 to one odds over at the uh, at one of the properties because I knew that was going to be the best odds we were going to see. And, in fact, I've seen them down now as low as 9-2 to two and 5-1. to one. So that may not cash it, although I do expect them to be in contention, but – at least it's getting a good number from a team that you know is somewhat reliable. And I think, you know, if they can if they can work out the issues that they had with their receiving core last year, I think that uh, uh, they'll be every bit the competitor. As far as the best moment this year, I'm not sure that I could really come up with anything. I guess it would be to see, and I alluded to it before, the the battle in Pittsburgh to see Russell Wilson, who was an utter failure in um, Denver and sort of vindicated. Uh, Pete Carroll's decision to get rid of him while he could uh, that uh, uh, I'd like to see what happens there and see if I can be vindicated by my faith in Justin Fields and he ends up starting uh, by the end of September for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers but I think the best moment for me uh, will be to see how the two previously 
long-tenured coaches, their teams, Bill Pelichick's Patriots and Pete Carroll's Seahawks, perform this year. We've already seen the decline in the Patriots once Brady left. Let's see if we see a further decline uh, with uh, Belichick leaving. Or will Gerard Mayo be perhaps the breath of fresh air that the Patriots really needed? Because more and more we hear reports about Bill Belichick supposedly being very, very difficult for the uh, players to play for uh, over the last few years. Those who have been with the team for, you know, five, six, seven years. So uh, I tend to be a little bit more optimistic out of the Patriots, notwithstanding, notwithstanding what Mark mentioned about their strength of schedule, just the change in attitude, sort of like the uh, uh, the exhale from being out of what was a difficult situation for many of the players. Talent, obviously, is going to be an issue. But it'll be interesting to see, will the Jets live up into expectations in the AFC East? Will Buffalo take what is expected to be a bit of a step back, considering, again, much like Kansas City, all the extra playoff games they've played in the last five, six seasons has taken a toll. And, of course, their best receiver, Stephon Diggs, no longer there. Josh Allen uh, having to live up to some of the criticisms he's taken about not being able to get this very talented Bills team into the Super Bowl in his five or six years since he's been at the top of the game. And where will Miami be? Will they continue to take a little bit of a step with Tua now the full-time quarterback and a, and a nice contract looking, uh, looking his way? Or will they perhaps uh, take a bit of a decline? I happen to be more optimistic. I happen to be optimistic on Miami, pessimistic on Buffalo. Not quite sure about New England, though I at no point considered making a futures play or a season win total on or against New England. And uh, the Jets, again, are intriguing because regardless of what happens with that offense, they still have a very, very good defense. All right. This AFC East preview is brought to you by Playbook Magazine. The 2024 preview guide is available at playbooksports.com. Check it out now. Uh, or you can go to your local bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, and Books a Million. All right. Uh, by the way, my 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 big moment would just be uh, watching Aaron Rodgers uh, walk off the field in uniform at the end of the first game of the season. That's my big moment. <laughs> uh, how, about, yeah. how about the end of the first series? Yeah, that would be Both nice. Both springs eternal there. And, and learn how to survive the Tom Brady way. Uh, a, 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 any rush coming, even just a fraction of a second, just. <laughs> just slam the ball on the ground, spike it, and walk. Live for another day. That's the reason he got hurt last year, trying to play like he was 25 years old. Uh, all right, so now we're going to go into the biggest concern for the 2024 season. Like, what could your biggest concerns be? And Mark's biggest concern, and I really like Mark's biggest concern. I, I definitely back that. And that is hopefully not having to watch games uh, with teams using third, fourth, and fifth string quarterbacks. So, uh, and it really went, uh, you know, uh, it went hand in hand with his Cleveland Browns best moment because that was a team that had to play and start the most quarterbacks. Uh, all right. So we'll start with you, Tony, uh, biggest concern for the NFL season. Uh, selfishly, it'll be how YouTube TV deviates from season one to season two. Cause I missed Sunday ticket a ton and I really didn't join the the YouTube TV party until late, so we'll see what happens with all of that. Um, and now it, it, the resources are spread even further. With you got to have Prime to watch Thursday nights and all of that. So we shall see. I'm going to use my time to ask you a question specifically, Greg, because this is interesting to me. And I would, uh, out of our panel, consider you the foremost Sam Darnold expert. What would you think about <laughs> my take on the? on the Vikings being a sleeper team. If Darnold wins this job, he just spent a season in San Francisco under a QB guru, only threw one pick, even though they're going to play basically one game. Uh, and, uh, and you know, is, is, has an opportunity here in all seriousness with Cousins gone and them looking for a quarterback with a rookie like uh, J.J. McCarthy in play and, uh, you know, Mullins also there, but certainly Darnold in, in position to – have a rebirth. What do you think? Uh, I I don't I don't see it. Uh, even after the first couple of games, remember when he first uh, joined Carolina, he, he had that Jet matchup with with Zach Wilson, and uh, he won the game. And then he won the next game, and he started off two and zero, 
and there was all this talk about you see what happens if he leaves the Jets and he's on Carolina and I just told everybody at the time I don't believe any of that you know just look at what was going on it was all Christian McCaffrey it had nothing to do with Sam Darnold uh I think the only hope he would have ever had or he ever has is he has to have uh, he has to be playing with a team like San Francisco. I think he has to be playing with uh, a loaded roster. That's certainly not the case in Minnesota. So I don't really give him much of a chance. I still think he, he could be a pretty good back quarterback. What's that? He's got receivers. I mean, we'll see what happens with he that Jordan Addison. He does. I said he's got receivers. We'll see what happens with Jordan Addison. But I assume he's not going to you know, face more than a preseason penalty for his little DUI thing. And then obviously he's got Justin Jefferson. He's yeah. got tight ends. So I, that, that, that's why, because they, they somewhat puzzle me. It, it, I think the defense will take a step back. And I think, the, but I'm, I'm, a fa- I'm a fan of, of uh, O'Connell. So, yeah, um, I, I think he'll have his moments. I think he is a, I don't, I'm not sure he's a starter, but he's young. He's still young. So, yes. He's 27. I, yes. I think with the right guy, maybe it's O'Connell. Uh, I think he could develop into a legitimate starting quarterback. Whether it's whether he's got the team to do it this year or not, and I get what you're saying as far as the receivers, but overall, do they have the offensive line? I'm not sure about that. Do they have the running game? I'm not sure about that. So, um, you know, uh, but I wouldn't. I'm not giving up on Sam Darnold. I, I just there's just no way he's ever going to live up to his draft building. That's for sure. But you know, there 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 are well, hopes. Look, look at Geno Smith. I mean, it took him all the way till he was what thirty-one years old, yeah. thirty years old. Before. Nine years, nine years in the league before he started to develop. Yeah. Of course, he had an off year last year, but yeah, the so, previous year know. was pretty damn good. Which is probably the best year, second best year he's ever had, yeah. and it was an off year. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I, I do think there's hope for for Darnold. So, um, so yeah, if you're a Viking fan, I'm sure that's not what you're thinking. You're thinking about JJ McCarthy. But, um, you know, well, uh, I'll root for him, no question. I think it's always great that the NFL, just like Mark was saying in his, in his uh, answer to this question, we just want to see good quarterback play. That's all. We don't want to see the injuries. We don't want to see third stringers out there. We just want to see these guys perform, and we'll see whether or not we can get that this year. Okay, uh, Jim, biggest concern? Well, um, biggest concern. I don't know that I. Well, would that be Aaron Rodgers winning the Super Bowl? That's not going to happen. I, I would. I would like to make that bet right now. <laughs> Somebody wants to give me the price. <laughs> um, I, you're, you're, I don't. Biggest concern. Anything you're worried about about the league in general? Well, I, I worry about the injuries to the quarterbacks, and I don't know what the hell we can do about it. We can't put, you know put skirts on them. I mean, we had a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, Cleveland, of course, was a bad example of having to start five guys throughout the year. Um, you know, my, my wife's whole family lives in Cleveland. And I have a lot of guys. I don't know. Tony, are you from Cleveland? Me? No. Yeah. Okay. I know Mark is. Uh, uh, Victor is. My wife families is i mean i'd like to see that long suffering uh fan base up there for all sports just to get something good going for them but i just i just don't know about the sean watson i don't know if he wants to do what he's supposed to do um he has the money it's all guaranteed he hasn't done a thing in years so my concern would be for the cleveland fans is this guy going to just melt that contract and not perform? And uh, because they got they got a lot of talent on that team, they're very capable of going a long way, maybe even all the way, if he could play anywhere near what he did in Texas. Yeah, now I'm going to remind people of this as often as possible, and of course this might come back to smash me in the head, but fact is is that all you have to do is look back at that last game he played last season against the Ravens to find out whether or not Deshaun Watson uh, is tough and whether Deshaun Watson wants to win and, and, and whether or not he wants to live up to that contract. Uh, he, he never should have stayed in that football game. He should have been uh, in the locker room uh, uh Two quarters uh, before he he at the end of that game, the gutsy way that he ended that game, he played his best game as a Cleveland Brown. I think he had a separated shoulder, is what I'm talking about. I think he had two injuries in the game. 
Uh, so yeah, if you go back to that Raven game last year, which was his last game, and by the way, not many teams beat Baltimore, as we know, last year. For him to put that performance together was uh, quite something, but it also just shows you how much bad luck he's had with the Browns because he puts together his best game, his toughest game, and then he's basically done for the season. So uh, if we can have had, that to Sean Watson this year, that would be great. He had less luck with the 27 uh, massage therapists in, in Texas. He did, yes. And he's <laughs> never going to probably stop hearing about that. So, <laughs> But he and, did get $256 million he did. guaranteed he did. as a result. I mean, so, I mean, I don't know. But now it's time to Quick. put up or shut up. Absolutely. Quick. Cleveland is, is a preseason team to watch. You got after Deshaun, or even if he plays not at all, Jameis Winston, Tyler Huntley, and Dorian Thompson Robinson as your quarterback. So that's, that's what you look like. You, you want QB depth in preseason games, baby. So Well, I, I we had a, 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 a on one of our other shows, somebody brought up some futures, and this was on another uh, network, and I had like three or four of them. Might have, actually, I don't know, maybe it was with Mark. We were doing something somewhere else. But anyway, uh, one of the teams I said that I think is a great futures team right now is the Cleveland Browns. Says, what on earth are they doing at forty to one to win the Super Bowl with the talent they have on that football team? If the, the shot- problem is they have a, they have a they have a brutal division that they're playing in. Oh you sure, I mean, but you, you know, forty Ravens, to one. The Bengals. I mean, I mean it's, it's well, you got to you, you know if you want to bank a future bet, that's make us put a small hundred, put a hundred bucks on them. I mean, it's what the hell. Yeah, that's but, yeah. So, uh, Andy, biggest concern. Yeah, if I recall correctly, didn't all four teams in the uh, AFC North have winning records last year? Something that we hadn't seen. I think I read it, it was like first time since 1934, where they had like six team divisions or whatever it was at the infancy of the NFL. So that is, if you're playing the AFC North this year, uh, you're playing four very good teams. But I think Mark hit it right because it's clear that the biggest issue that, uh, or the biggest concern is the... Uh, abundance of injuries especially the quarterbacks look at the guys who uh were lost last year aaron Rodgers, first game of the season kirk cousins early in the season joe burrow continues to have health issues that has hurt him throughout uh, uh, his career but maybe another concern that i have is what will the philadelphia eagles look like this year if you remember a couple of years ago tennessee had that great start to the season and then faded horribly and they carried that poor season off the next year, last year, while well, the Philadelphia Eagles, what were they, 10-1 and one, and then collapsed at the end of the season? They were basically a no-show on that loss to Tampa Bay in the playoffs. There's a plenty of talent in that team, and, you know, talent-wise, they rate right up there, maybe even still ahead of Dallas as far as the NFC East, but will they be able to overcome what Tennessee was unable to overcome uh, last year as far as the carryover impact, if you want to call it that, from uh, being the number one seed in midseason in the AFC to uh, – just a total collapse, and you know, obviously, last year it cost Rabel this job. All right, let's move on to another segment. This is NFL long range forecasting, and what we're going to do here is we're going to just again, this is early, so this does not have to be your final, final decision. But at this point in time, mid July, uh, we next week's training camps do start, but we're going to have our, our prediction show. Uh, at least another, whatever, six weeks from now, give or take. Give us your major surprise team to make the playoffs and to not make the playoffs. So give us a surprise team to make it and not make it. We'll start with Tony. All right, let me look at this because I do, I didn't brag about it like Andy did, but I do have my my, uh, playbook here. So I'll look at these projected win totals and make my determination there because I didn't get this part of the thing or I didn't look at it, I guess. I will say that the Browns do make the playoffs. So their projected win total is eight and a half, and they do play in a very tough division, obviously, with the Steelers and the the, uh, the Ravens and uh, the Bengals. Bengals. So, yeah. So, I mean, look, I, I think – make. I, I, I agree with you. I, I like Stefanski. Um, I think that as a long shot, 40 to 1 surprises me. I didn't have even looked at that number. That does surprise me. So I will say I like them a lot. I think Atlanta is going to take a step forward. Uh, hopefully, Cousins stays healthy because you know Desmond Ritter held them back so much. Our, uh, Arthur Smith held them back a, a ton in terms of play calling and not understanding who you're, who the guys that you should have gotten the ball to and force fed. 
uh, should have been last year. You know, pulled my hair out in a bunch of their games. So that's actually uh, Mark's team. Mark Mark's surprise team Falcons. to make the playoffs is the Falcons. But keep in mind, right now the Falcons, based on NFL Super Bowl futures, the Falcons are the top team in the NFC, in the NFC South. South. Yeah. Not only that, uh, the Circa has their their mid point you know the three ones the one in the middle which is the more accurate one for what everybody else is in line with nine and a half wins so they are expected to be uh you know a playoff team yeah. although considering their recent years and i still have questions about the quarterback situation i guess you would have to say based upon what these teams have done in the past few years atlanta making the playoffs based on that would be a surprise well, and i guess uh, it's a weak division so i mean they do have that i mean they could just win that division they're there yeah, absolutely, and I, I, they definitely. I think they're the most talented team in the division. I mean, I, I like uh, some of the parts that Tampa Bay has on the defensive end, but we'll see if Baker Mayfield can do it again. And my disappointment, I, I, I believe that this this one comes easy. I think it's the Bills. I think uh, you know Josh Allen is Superman. There's no question about that. But they're one Josh Allen injury away from I think having a really rough year. They've moved on from a bunch of their leaders on the defensive side of the football. Um, mind you, uh, the the uh, I can't I can't well, well, remember they, they his did name. Move, they finally moved on with those safeties. So the, the, well, the corner yeah, the safeties and, and the corner. Tre'Davious White, Tre'Davious yes. Smith is, is that his name? Tre, uh, White, oh, Tre'Davious right. White. Yep, he's yeah, gone too. Tre'Davious White, uh, he is gone now, and obviously they had huge expectations for him that he wasn't able to fulfill because he was always injured. Yep, but I mean that that's a huge loss. Uh, and again, I mean, I think this is a Bills team. They moved on from Diggs. Uh, they moved on from my UCF boy, who uh, with Jacksonville. Hopefully, he has a great season. But um, you know, we'll see. We'll see who steps up for this team. I definitely don't expect the Dolphins to take a step back. I do think that the Patriots bring up the rear, and then that leaves the Jets to play spoiler. And uh, I, I think that uh, that's within the realm of possibility. Obviously, we know what we're going to get from them defensively, and then if Rodgers can stay healthy. They're going to make offensive progress. So, Buffalo to me does not make the playoffs as my okay. surprise. Buffalo, who's, no. Who's the, who's the who's the Jets backup quarterback? Taylor, Tyrod Taylor. Okay, he's capable. Yeah. Capable, uh, by capable the way, player. so so you have Atlanta good, Buffalo bad. Atlanta and Cleveland good, depending on where. And which, Cleveland. and Cleveland's win win total is actually less than Atlanta. So okay. whichever one of those you want to take, and uh, and then uh, Buffalo bad. And it'd be interesting to see if Buffalo does not make the playoffs. Is that it from from McDermott? Is he done? Probably. So he's got a lot of criticism. I think he should. Given what the expectations have been and how how passionate that fan base is, they they probably would have seen enough if he doesn't make the playoffs. Okay. I know for me, I've seen enough. I think he should have been replaced. He is he's a defensive guy that's not creative enough on the offensive side. Um, now, whether that's him putting roadblocks up for offensive coordinators not doing their job, or he just hadn't picked good offensive coordinators, but they had Dable there, and and at that time they were good, but he hasn't done all that well uh, emotionally, especially in, with the Giants. Yeah, well, you know what could happen if McDermott doesn't have a good season and he gets fired. There is a distinct possibility that if the Giants do not have a good season. And they move on, obviously, from Jones, and they're going to get a new quarterback. They might just decide to get a new coach. And then the Buffalo Bills would be able to hire Dable after all. So uh, he could be available again. All right. I would think that Dable is safe because he did get him to the playoffs and win a playoff game just two years ago. I believe that was his first season with the Giants two years ago. Yep. Problem is, though, he is did well. there's, there's just a lot of this. Uh, unfortunately, there's been a I lot agree with of you on Daniel coaching. Jones, Interior, you know, inside the building issues that went on last year that cannot carry on again this year. They just plus have... he's now got to replace Saquon Barkley. Yeah, so. goodwill in New York last week to week. So no. yeah, that's true. All right, Jim, give us a. We'll start with your surprise playoff team this year in July, mid July. Give us a surprise mid July playoff team. Jim um, Feist. L.A. Chargers. Okay. I'm going to go a lot with the head coach that I have a lot of respect for. He's won in most league. He's won everywhere he's been. He knows how to build a team. He has a quality quarterback. I'd like to see them get Ayuk out of San Francisco or someone like that. You've got a, Devontae you know, Adams. Like a monster. 
Well, yeah, that's another one. Uh, whether they have the pieces to do that or not, I question whether they're strong enough on defense at this point. Um, they went from the worst coach I've seen in years in Staley to one of the best coaches from a record standpoint in the pros and in college in Harbaugh. So um, I think if it, and I, and I don't have much respect for the other teams in there. The Raiders aren't any good. Denver's not any good. Kansas City, we know who they are, and that's a walkover. If they stay healthy, they're winning that division. Now, if the Chargers can beat the other two teams handily, that gives them four wins, and um, they could sneak in. All so right. I, th- I, th- I, b- I do believe they have a chance to make it in, especially with that coach. All right, so a team that made the playoffs last year that surprisingly does not make it this year. Buffalo. Oh, we're on that I, Buffalo I, I, bandwagon I that, here. I think I think that they've uh, they've wasted a number of years with a very talented quarterback, and they misused them. And they have a defensive a defensive head coach that I think has you know granted the man knows football. He's a good at what he does, but this is an offensive league now, and um, I, you know with a quarterback like. Josh, I mean, a lot of people say he's second or best, or third best in the league. So when you got a guy like that, you're not doing it. Um, I'm not saying he's a bum. I'm just saying he hasn't produced what a lot of people felt he should have. All right. Uh, by the way, Mark, uh, his team, to surprisingly – uh, missed the playoffs, and I, again, I borderline on if this is a surprise. We're going to give Mark a break because he's under the weather uh, with, <laughs> with with Atlanta and Tampa Bay, but it's Tampa Bay, um, and of course, I don't think that would be too much of a surprise because nobody really thought they'd make the playoffs last year except me. Uh, so uh, yeah, they were 100 to one, by the way, to win the Super Bowl. Big difference between winning the Super Bowl, of course, and making the playoffs, but. Uh, yeah, they were very competitive even in their playoff game against Detroit after winning one game. So they did have a really surprisingly good season last season, but Mark believes they're going to have a surprisingly bad season. So, Andy, uh, it's up to you to wrap up. Surprisingly good playoff team. Okay, I'm going to go actually with uh, – well, I've, do, I've done a preview of three of two divisions. I'm going to make it a third because <laughs> I'm going to focus on the uh, AFC South. Okay. Um, I think Jacksonville didn't make it made the playoffs two years ago after years of lack of success, um, and then they made the playoffs two years ago, and they just missed last year at nine and eight. I think they take a further step backwards this year, but I think the team that may show some improvement this year was another team that finished nine and eight despite losing their quarterback Richardson for the season, mm-hmm. and yet they. By, by the way, let me just mention the fact that Cleveland made the playoffs with five starting quarterbacks is as one of the most impressive performances I can recall in the last 25 years that they had to use that many quarterbacks and still made the playoffs. Now, Indianapolis still finished 9-8 and eight despite losing their quarterback, who was a rookie for the season, and ended up uh, that coming close. Remember, they were four, I think they were four wins the year before, but they had been a playoff team with double-digit wins for a few years before that. The other team in that division that I like, I don't think much of Tennessee right now, I like the Houston Texans, what they showed last year. And remember, they blew out Cleveland in that playoff game after they were a big surprise. Remember, they did it with a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach. Normally, you expect teams to have that kind of success, historically, to fall back about a a bit. I don't think that that's going to be the case with Houston. I think they are continuing to get better, and they may end up winning that division with 12 or 13 wins this year. So I'm going to say that I'm expecting them to do well. As far as the team... I, I can't use Jacksonville because, according to the question, it had to be a playoff team from last year. So I am, uh, re- I have to reluctantly go with the Buffalo Bills because I do think that all those games have taken a toll on them. The coach is under some pressure. They've lost their best receiver. Uh, Josh Allen, there's been some criticism that he has not been used the right way in a lot of the key games that uh, they've ended up losing. So although I do expect them to still be a very competitive team, for purposes of this discussion, 
I would say, of the playoff teams that made that made them last year, the one that I could see the biggest drop off, which would arguably be not make the playoffs, would be Buffalo. And especially especially if the Jets are as good as advertised or hyped, and if Miami continues to show the improvement that they started, what is it, two straight years making the uh, uh, the playoffs. So, um, so did you have one surprisingly good team? Was that Jacksonville? No, Jacksonville is uh, one of the, the the team that I expect to take a step back. They were not a playoff team, so no. I couldn't use them as a playoff team. I'm going to use with Buffalo, but I expect both of those teams to step backwards. I like both Houston and the team that I would be a surprise playoff contender or playoff team would be Indianapolis. Okay, so after failing to get in on the last game of the season, losing to Houston, you're going to say Indianapolis finds a way to get into the playoffs in mid-July. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that and, works And out. again, for all of us, it's predicated on essentially quarterbacks staying healthy for of a course. vast majority yes. of the season. Yeah, after what happened last year, uh, I, I would I would think that most handicappers are going to preface that every time they talk no. about their predictions. That's if uh, Aaron Rodgers stays healthy. That's if Deshaun Watson stays healthy and so far down the line. No. All right. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure which team I'm going to – I'm. Uh, uh, there are three teams – that uh, I, I'm going to tell you right now, one of them I think will not make the playoffs, and I'm going to I'm going to make this prediction uh, on our prediction show: either San Francisco, Kansas City, or Baltimore. I believe one of those three teams will not make the postseason. Uh, I almost said San Francisco. Yeah, with see, the turmoil that they have. Yeah, the whole thing we talked about this every season: the Super Bowl loser, something you know, unless it's Tom Brady and the Patriots, something you know. I know some elite teams and elite quarterbacks have have made it, but. For the most part, a lot of these teams have had bad seasons. Even the Eagles came this. Cl- if they would have had a, l- if they would have had like two weeks earlier, started their, their, their problems, they might not have made the postseason. So even the Eagles had a devastatingly poor season, um, getting beat up by Tampa Bay in the playoff game. Uh, I know the score was close, but it really wasn't that close. Um, anyway, ter- terrible game. They never showed up. Yeah, and um, so yeah. Wish that, ga- wish that game was on Prime. <laughs> That's now, you know the one thing the Eagles did lose their offensive and defense. They did yep. last year, yeah, before yep. last That's season. That's a big loss. Yep, yep. And for Kansas City, the only reason I would even mention them is because sort of like what Andy said, uh, it's the fact that they played so many games and have had a majority of luck with their injury situation. It has to catch up to them at some point. At some point, Patrick Mahomes has got to go down for half a season or something. At some point, you know, somebody or a multitude of key players have to get hurt because the rest of the, the league goes the through pro- it. The problem, the problem is they could win their division with all the question marks surrounding the Raiders and, and the Broncos. They could win their division nine and eight, and or even eight and nine, because all they have to do is win their division and they're in the playoffs. And there's really not that much to go against in that division. Well, the char- Chargers are the wild card in yep, that division. That's it. That's right. By and the way, Jim, you mentioned about the def- the offensive and defensive coordinators for Philadelphia leaving before the start of last year. Of the thing that's interesting is they started 10-1 and one and then faded, and you wonder if maybe part of that fade had to do with an inability of the offensive and defensive coordinators to make the necessary adjustments to things that other teams were catching up to them by midseason. Good point. All right. So uh, next week, we're going to be talking about college football again, as far as I know. I have no idea if we're talking NFL, too. Um, I don't have a guarantee of what we're talking about yet, uh, but uh, I, there was some indication from Mark that we're going to talk some college football next week, but that might not be uh, entirely accurate, but what I would just guess we're going to talk both college and NFL next week. How exactly we're going to do that? Well, of course, we'll leave it up to Mark. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back. I'm sure he's uh, he's, he's going to be back. Uh, he just has uh, you know a little simple case of the flu. Nowadays, COVID is pretty pretty much the flu, depending on your your grading of of COVID. And he says he's pretty he's on the pretty good side. Uh, he's had it three times, and this has been the easiest he's felt. So, he said his conditions were very mild. Yeah. So uh, we expect Mark to be back next week. Um, uh, before I let you guys go, uh, a- uh, Andy, what are you up to? Uh, LogicalApproach.com, what are you working on now? 
Well, uh, in addition to uh, meeting with a lot of people for uh, signing up for contests and everything with the proxy work that I do for the, uh, the significant contests, is I'm preparing for both college and pro football. Uh, I'm enjoying these four days off for the All-Star break because it really lets me get into doing a lot of, like I said, the schedule analysis uh, for both college and pro that uh, normally I would be devoting more time to getting ready for tonight and tomorrow's baseball. So I'm getting ready uh, or I'm getting further and, and further into uh, the nuts and bolts of taking a look at, uh, you know, I've looked at the, the week one lines for the NFL, starting to get a few thoughts there, like Tony mentioned, as far as uh, the Cleveland-Dallas game that, he, that he's uh, taking a look at. Also, you know, college football starts in about uh, five weeks. It's only those two games. I think one of them is, uh, was it, Florida State, Georgia Tech, I think over in Dublin. And I think there's some other 1A, uh, I still call them 1A and 1AA because the uh, NCAA likes to get 1A and 1AA was very easy to understand. 1A is better than 1AA. FBS, FCS is a way of saying, yeah, we don't have any championship game in the top division, so let's just call it the football bowl division. So in any event, uh, taking a look at some of those early season, those Labor Day weekend matchups, there are some very many attractive matchups that I'm starting to dig into. All right. Oh, by the way, last week uh, when we were talking college football and the playoffs and such, I mentioned I really hope they don't screw one of these group of five teams. And I did uh, wind up responding uh, and putting it. Actually, I'm wondering if it was a response or I just put it in the comment section of the video because I did more research. And what happened was if you looked in February, it said that the top four teams were getting a buy, the top four conference teams. Well, all of a sudden they must have change things because from february to july they said five and i was like five there's only four conferences in the f in the fbs uh, uh, power five well apparently they are giving an at-large bid to the top group of five ranked team which is going to be whoever finishes first in their conference and then of course obviously is the best team in the group of five as a first place team is going to get the auto, one of those playoff bids so but they're, uh, but they're not getting a buy but they're not they're not getting, getting a buy buys. correct only the first they'll four still, uh, they will still five. play the number 12 they will still play the number 12 team if they are seated fifth uh yes so there you go so, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure um, if anybody didn't catch that, that uh, at least we're going to get uh, a group of five team, a top group of five team in no matter what. Uh, okay. We can, root for, we can root for the Rebels to be that team. We can, absolutely. They, they disappointing can, they can. end of the season, but, hey, you know what? You can't win them all. Uh, Jim, what are you doing right now? Uh, you kind of tipped us off. Uh, you're a big WNBA fan right now. So uh, what else you, What else you're working on? Well, and, the, the, the WNBA takes like a month off, and they don't come back till the 14th of August. Wow. Which is really unusual. But uh, baseball starts up in a couple is days. Is that because of the Olympics? Friday, I think. Yeah, it's and the Olympic break. break. Yeah, the Olympic break and their normal break, all-star break, okay. I guess. Uh, so it's like combined together. It's like almost a month off. It's crazy. But uh, I've been enjoying it and doing and making money doing it. So I've... I've up until this year, I never bet the WNBA, but I think because of Caitlin Clark and all the, I mean, she's quite a following. Um, Jim, I hear that. Uh, I, I hear that the money that you earn in the WNBA is the same as the money that you earn <laughs> in the NFL. It's a weird. I never knew that. I was always. Oh come I, on! No, I thought you get a, an extra twenty percent bonus. On yeah, that. I just I didn't I didn't get that. <laughs> so yeah, was it like the guy says, "Well, I'm losing at hockey, I'm losing at baseball, I'm losing at football." Well, how about tennis? Oh, I don't know anything about tennis. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> so. everybody <laughs> thinks it's like everybody thinks that they got to make money in the big games and the big sports because that's what. Hey man, it don't matter where you make the money as long as you make money. Uh, Tony, what are you up to? Because uh, I know you posted a lot of videos during the NBA regular season uh, here on the channel. Uh, what are you going to be? What should we be looking forward to as far as your pick videos sometime soon? Yeah, well, well, we'll see. Uh, we'll hash out some conference stuff. I, I'm doing videos at Wager Talk TV pretty much daily uh, today. I did an MLS thing that actually uploaded uh, very slowly, so I actually didn't end up using it. But I do have a free play video on. Uh, tonight's Indiana Fever Dallas Wings game with some props and whatnot. And so I've become a big WNBA proponent. Uh, and, uh, you know, going to miss the league, actually, because like Jim, it's been profitable. Uh, MLB obviously starts on Friday, so that's been good. 
uh, and then uh, I'm going to get into college football heavily. So college football always first, so nothing new there. And then NFL, you know, I'll, I'll use the final two weeks of August to really start getting into that. But uh, as far as college football, that begins in earnest, uh, you know, it has already and uh, get serious about that. Try to knock out a couple of teams a day and then keep tabs on what they're doing. That's that's pretty much the MO on that. So uh, and, and then as far as handicapping, just a bunch of stuff and, and soccer's on my plate right now. Summer League is on my plate, but won't be soon because it, it's going to, you know, once the first couple of summer league games are done in Vegas, it, you can uh, you really can't tell who's going to play and who isn't. So right. right now that's the case. But yeah, it's been pretty good too on, on the summer league front. And also, don't forget uh, football newsletter, the weekly playbook newsletter. Uh, get a jump start on uh, making sure that you put that. Uh, into your resources for the upcoming season. They also have, of course, the Playbook Totals Tip Sheet Football Newsletter, which is the best football newsletter on the planet. Just take a look at their record last year, 163, 115, and 4. The last three years, you were, uh, I believe, if you followed that to a T, you earned over $12,000. So that's the Playbook Totals Tip Sheet Football Newsletter. And yeah. between, uh, or I should Victor say, Victor does a good job with that. Oh yeah, he does a great job. With that. Can't wait to get Victor back on the program. Uh, hopefully this season, uh, and 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 right now, even though you have to wait for the tip sheet newsletter and the football newsletter, you don't have to wait for the free coffee club e letter. That's daily through the Super Bowl, free, no charge bonus. So check it out, the coffee club e letter through the Super Bowl. And Mark will be here next week to explain all of it in more finer detail, as only Mark can do. So, guys, I appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to talking some more college football, NFL again with you next week. Uh, and, of course, all the way throughout the season. Jim, appreciate you uh, being back again. Uh, we missed you last week, and uh, we look forward to seeing you throughout the season as well. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to see everybody again. Good luck this week. Take care, guys. Good luck, y'all. Take care.